Indeed. Well, uh, welcome back. It's good to see We're you again. We're back again, yeah. Yes, yes, back in the saddle. So for those of you who uh, maybe missed us from earlier, mm -hmm. um, I am uh, Christopher Harrison. I'm that, John Galloway. That's John Galloway. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and wherever else it is that you might be. It was uh, very interesting on the chat before the call. We got people staying. It's the middle of the night, people in Malaysia, all over the world. This I know. It's, it's really crazy. It's, it, that, that's always the fun part about yeah. this. Yeah. So, But uh, in the meantime, this is uh, introduction to ASP.NET MVC. Yep. Um, what we're going to do is uh, kind of introduce ourselves. I'm apparently going to bring up my start menu. There we go. Um, <laughs> but we're going to introduce ourselves. We're going to uh, kind of talk a little bit about, well, what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And then we're actually going to talk about it, uh, which I think is <laughs> That's a good is, game is plan. Fantastic. Hey. <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, John, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is John Galloway. I am, I've been at Microsoft four and a half years now. They haven't got rid of me yet. I am a, um, <laughs> I'm an Azure technical evangelist, but I mostly focus on ASP.NET MVC. Yep. Um, I uh, just finished up updates for the Rocks MVC 5 book, so really excited about that. So that's uh, definitely something I spend a lot of time on. And um, I have a podcast, and I'm uh, happy to be here. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, that works out well because I'm 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 kind of happy to be here as well. Um, as it says on the slide there, uh, I am uh, Christopher Harrison. Uh, I uh, was an MCT for many 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 moons. Uh, presented at uh, a good number of uh, of conferences and uh, right about uh, oh literally three weeks ago, uh, I actually uh, got started uh, here at the mothership, as it were. Uh, <laughs> they uh, offered me a position, and I just I I couldn't refuse. So I've been uh, onboarded as a uh, content developer uh, for Microsoft Learning Experiences. Uh, now, as far as the uh, the course itself goes, this is basically going to be our next um, eight hours, six hours. Um, eight, eight hours, I guess, will be the total time. Six hours probably uh, recorded. Uh, this is what we're going to be covering. Uh, so we're uh, going to start with the basics of MVC, kind of talk about the different moving parts, what mm -hmm. this is all about. And then in modules two, four, and five, dig into the M, dig into the C, and dig into the V, and talk about each one one of those different things. Talk about our models, talk about our controllers, talk about our views. In the middle there, we'll go ahead and introduce Visual Studio and talk about all the cool things that Visual Studio can do for you. Because right. one of the things that I find when people make the move into MVC, especially if they're coming from web forms, they look at that and they go, oh my gosh, that's a lot of code. How about you know drag and drop? How about code generation? So we'll talk about a lot of the different things that Visual Studio can, uh, can do for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're also going to take a, a good look at uh, both Bootstrap and Identity. Um, identity of course, came along with MVC5. Bootstrap was fully integrated with uh, Visual Studio 2013. And um, uh, really kind of see how you can incorporate a little bit of additional security and then get a very nice look and feel to, uh, to your sites. Uh, and then finally, uh, since this is designed to be an intro course, we're going to take a look at sort of what your next steps are. So if this is your first real big experience taking a look at, uh, at MVC, you're going to leave here feeling, OK, well, all of that was cool and I learned an awful lot, but you know, where should I go from here? And so we're going to talk about exactly that yeah. at, uh, at the end. Can, can we cut over to mine uh, real quick? Yeah. I, um, I thought this was really interesting. We, uh, we brought up a poll and uh, we asked for a different people's experience level. And um, so we got a, uh, we got, let me see, 18% beginning developer. Yep. 10% uh, experience with, with HTML, but new yep. to .NET. Okay. 12% were experienced .NET developers, but new to web forms. So maybe back-end coders or desktop, you know. Uh -huh. uh, uh, then 30% experience with web forms, but new to MVC. 28% mm -hmm. were uh, some experience with MVC, but wanted to learn more. And 2% were Lion Tamers. Well, it, 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 that's interesting. Lion Tamer is a big audience for yes, us. So I'm yeah. actually kind of surprised to see the number uh, being, uh, being that low. Right, right. Yeah. You know, so I really thought we had that audience locked up. <laughs> um, but but in any event, the, the real takeaway from all of that is mm -hmm. the fact that we've got a lot of people out there that are relatively new to uh, to MVC and relatively new to kind of all of this, which is right. fantastic. Um, which, uh, bringing that into setting expectations is exactly what we're uh, geared towards. Uh, that what we're really looking for is uh, to try and connect with everybody who is relatively brand new. 
So we expect that you maybe have a little bit of experience with, uh, with .NET. Maybe you've kind of real quick created an MVC project and went, oh, wow, there's, there's an awful lot of stuff here. What in the world is going on? Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll be able to help clarify uh, a lot of that. And then in particular, talking to the uh, web form developers that are taking a look at, uh, at MVC and maybe how that can actually assist them going forward in their, uh, in their different projects. Right. Uh, now, as far as uh, kind of if you want to follow along, uh, we will be talking about a uh, GitHub repository a little bit later. We'll actually have that URL. We'll share that out once we actually get some code up there to share. So that way, if you're sitting at home, sitting at the office, and you're wanting access to our source code, you'll be able to get to it pretty quickly, pretty much like right after we check it in, you're going to be able to go ahead and download that. So we're actually very excited about that, yep. which, by the way, all of this is recorded live. This is what's happening now is happening now. So so if something goes sideways with, with GitHub, remember, we're, we're, we're going live <laughs> yeah, We're here. on the fly. So yeah, exactly. So um, here's our, our right up front apology. Something might go wrong. You know, it was funny in the last Jumpstart, <laughs> yep. we, had li we had people didn't believe us that it was yeah, live. Yeah, exactly. And they, yeah. we had to actually, I forget, we like put up the front yeah, page we, of the we, newspaper. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give soccer scores. Exactly. Today. Yeah. Or, yeah. or football, depending football. On, on where yeah. you're from. So um, in any event, uh, the other real quick thing to mention, and John, I don't know if you want to take two seconds and do this, um, but if you are looking to follow along or looking to maybe just get started, the tool that you are going to need, of course, is Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so can we, uh, well, I think we're set up now. We can cut to my There screen. we go. So uh, if you go to visualstudio.com and you click on free Visual Studio trial, and you can actually, well, you, if you logged in as me, you can do that. You know, um, there's also you can you can download if you go, you download uh, Visual Studio Express. So Visual Studio yep. Express for web, I think uh, downloads here, and underneath that we there's uh, Express, and Express for web is the one that you'll want. Yep. Express 2013 for web, completely free. Nobody will ever, you know, um, the, it doesn't. Take any money from you. You know, you put it, you register for it, you download it, you're good to go. And a cool new thing um, that we we just announced is that Web Essentials, which is a nice extension mm -hmm. for uh, for Visual Studio, uh, is now also that's completely free and works with Express as well. So that's awesome. Great out of the box, completely free. Get started with it, no excuse. And and if you haven't played around with Web Essentials, um, you're going to be very impressed with it. Yeah. It's a, it's a neat, neat, neat little tool. Yep. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about uh, MVA, and then we'll uh, kind of launch on into it, because I'm sure you're probably sitting there thinking, hey, guys, get to some code. We yes. want to see code. Um, but before we get into that, just one last little thing here. Uh, you are going to notice that, uh, of course, we do have uh, Microsoft Virtual Academy, um, over uh, 1 million registered users. Actually, I believe that number is now 2 million. Wow. Uh, should, should, it, it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's being confirmed Pretty in the close. background here. Off yeah. by a million. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, millions and millions. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so 2 million uh, registered users, uh, which is pretty incredible when you mm -hmm. stop and think about it. Of course, you can get uh, points for uh, attending this course. You'll notice the uh, little link to the uh, voucher, and then the voucher code is intro ASP.NET MVC, and that's going to expire uh, one month from now. So people want that voucher code because it's going to get them those 50 points. Exactly. Okay. That's exactly it. Yep. So uh, what do you say we uh, launch on into Let's it? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and talk about the, the basics of uh, MVC and the, uh, and the different uh, moving parts. So. OK, great. So let's cut over to mine. I've got the same slide showing, so I'm not even sure how I'll know if it's going. <laughs> um, great. OK, there so we go. so we're going to talk, first of all, ASP.NET, just the overview. You know, what, what is uh, high level, what's there? Yep. Um, we'll look at kind of the, what is the M and the V and the C. In MVC, and then finally, we'll talk a little bit about what's the point. Yeah, and that's that's the the biggest thing. I, I, I get so. that so frequently. Yep. Okay, so ASP.NET in general, um, you may have seen a slide like this over time. The idea is you've got this common core ASP.NET running under everything, and this is handling all your things like caching and security, and you know actually serving responses out to users and things like that. And then on top of that. At the, at the very top, we've got sites and services. And the idea is that you know, sites, uh, this is talking about you know, delivering content to web browsers, uh, yep. HTML, it's forms, people are interacting with it. And then services are things where you're sending you know, XML or, or uh, JSON or something other than HTML back and forth. Right. 
And so then um, kind of the, the glue that, you know, the different parts that you can use to hook those together mm -hmm. um, are uh, MVC is kind of one of these things in the middle and it's designed for serving up websites. Right. And the, I think the real point of this here is that it's all the same kind of family. Yes. So the idea is if you're familiar with web forms, this isn't something brand new, com completely different. Mm -hmm. It's all ASP.NET under the hood. Right. And the idea now is that you're just kind of, it's, it's a new, it's a different coding model but it's running on top of all the same things you're already familiar with. So a lot of, if, if you are making that move from web forms, then a lot of what you've already learned uh, is going to be transferable then into, uh, into MVC, that it is still one ASP.NET to rule them all, right. as it were. And, and that's gotten even better with the, the latest release, Visual Studio 2013. Yes. We've made you know real effort. One, probably the biggest web dev feature in Visual Studio 2013 was the idea that, um, it's one ASP.NET, so it's very easy now to say, you know, I'm going to, in one project, have MVC and Web Forms and SignalR and Web API. Yep. I'll pick and choose what I'd like. And, exactly. And probably, you know, that's nice to know you could do that. Mm -hmm. But what's even better is to know that uh, even if, if you've got one, pro like, let's say you're working completely in MVC yep. for a week, and then you jump over to Web Forms, identity, you know, uh, the, the scaffolding, the bootstrap system, all that's the same across them. So you can take your skills and jump between them pretty easily. And that's a big thing. Yep. Yep. Cool. Okay, so that's kind of where we are looking at with MVC. Now let's talk about specifically what is MVC. So every MVC uh, presentation has to start with some kind of <laughs> diagram. Yep. And I used to always see these, you know, there would be a box with an M and a box with an M, or a V and a box with a C and arrows going between them. I never really followed what was going on. So this is my version of that. So the idea <laughs> okay. is yep. uh, looking at specifically what happens when somebody requests, somebody types something into their browser, right? So a request comes in. Um, that gets routed to a controller. Now yep. this is a big, this is, you know, first kind of big difference between something like web forms or PHP or you right. know, some of these kind of more file-based systems, classic ASP, yep. right, uh, cold fusion. And so in those, a request, a URL maps to a file, right. and then the file does something and then returns a response. Right. In this case, it's completely different, right? The it, request comes into a, method of a class. Exactly, yeah. The simplest way that I always like to explain that is that really what's happening is the user is calling a method on a class. That really is it. So unlike in the past, like John mentioned, you're not going to a PHP file, you're not going to an ASPX file, you're calling a method on a class. Now there's a little bit of magic that'll happen, we'll talk a little bit about that later on, how ASP.NET will figure out what method it is that needs to be called. But at the end of the day, that's what it is. So your controller's a class and you're gonna be calling a method. And, and by the way, and this is always my favorite part is I, I is I love that right on there the the, the controller <laughs> retrieves the model and does stuff yep yeah <laughs> <laughs> and really I mean because it's completely open that controller could yep. be could be authenticating someone it could be you know it could it would, anything it could be doing a database lookup it could be putting something in a database it could be creating an image whatever it is it does something so yep that's does really stuff <laughs> but, but so this is a key thing to to you know uh, it's a key difference, and it's also kind of freeing, because when, when I was working with web forms a lot, it was always kind of like, well, a URL comes to a file, and that file needs to decide. <laughs> Here, it's like, it's a method, and that method can make decisions, run logic, yeah, very lightweight. Yeah, that's it, and it, it, it makes it so much easier in trying to group things together, rather than trying to figure out, okay, well, what am I gonna call this page, and what am I gonna call this page, and, and you know, what's my folder structure gonna look like, and so forth. Now, it's all about just good class design. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. Okay, so we've done some stuff in the controller. A lot of the time, the result of doing something is data. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we process, somebody comes to request a controller action that says, get me a list of users. Uh, we're going to be playing with this MVC music store sample. Um, and so, you know, maybe get me a list of albums right. or, or artists. And so then that, that result is the model. So a model is just packaging up some data to ship off to present to the user. Yep. So and and we'll be talking about this more later, but this is just a class. It exactly. Is, 
It's just a, here's some stuff and we're packaging it together yep. to send somewhere else. The one thing, I, and if I can jump in for two seconds here, only because somebody had asked the question in the, uh, in the chat window about view models. They asked, you know, is the controller like the view model? If we go back to the slide here real quick, um, what you're going to notice there is that, is that model. Um, that model could be what's known as a view model, which mm -hmm. is a class, just like John mentioned, but this time specifically geared for MVC. So it's not going to have any logic about how it's connecting out to a database or to a web service that it is just, hey, this is the data that we want the user to, uh, to interact with. And that's a really key point. Great question. So the, yeah, absolutely. So the idea here, the model is not directly hooked up to your database. The model is not, there's no, the model could just be a collection. It could be an yep. array. It could be, yeah. it can actually just be a simple data. It can be a string. Yep. So it's just something that the controller is passing to the view. So then, the view is what represents that data. So we've got, you know, a controller action did something. It created some data, and now we actually want to return, we want to show something on the user screen. Right. And so the, the view's job is to take that data, to take that model information, and turn it into HTML. Mm -hmm. And that's all it does. So the important, a really important thing here is there's, uh, they call it separation of concerns. So the idea is that the controller has no idea about how to display HTML. It doesn't even know it's displaying HTML. It could be displaying some other exactly. content type or whatever. Yeah, it could be returning um, uh, like, JSON. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So, and then the model is just some data. It's, it really doesn't have any logic. In. Right. You can put validation logic in them and stuff, but mm -hmm. generally models don't know where they came from and they don't know where they're going. Yep. They're just, they're just kind of like me. I just wander <laughs> around, right? And then the view is the, um, is, it has no logic really in it. You want right. your views to just have HTML and just say, here's my model information. It's a template system. Exactly. Yeah, that one big thing that I always like to kind of mention is if you're putting an if statement into your view, and we'll talk a little bit about coding into your views and so forth, but mm -hmm. I, I always like to say if you're putting an if statement into your view, you might be doing the wrong thing, that it's uh, a code smell, uh, to quote uh, Martin Fowler from the, uh, from the book uh, Refactoring. Um, it's a code smell. It's, it's not necessarily a 100% indication that, hey, you've done something bad, but it's one of those where it could yeah. Indicate, mm -hmm. yeah. Smell off to you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That just like you mentioned before, with a view, we really want that to just display the data. So let the controller do the logic. Let the controller figure out. Oh, hey, wait. We need to display an item not found page as opposed to putting that logic inside that view. Which bringing it all the way back to those moving parts, you'll notice that separation of concern. So the controller takes the request. It does stuff. It's going to get the data that the user is going to need. That data is going to be inside the model. The model is combined with the view. The view handles the display, and then out the door it goes. Great. Yep. And so that's the last thing on my slide here is the out the door it goes, right? Yep. So, so uh, that's the technical way to describe right, it. Right. Exactly. Out the door it goes. Let me see if I can do this. If I do maybe say a laser pointer, is that going to work? Yeah. So I'm. I'm Ooh. You, you put, okay. We're so, going high tech here. So right. So we've got this whole kind of flow. The request comes in, goes to the controller. Controller runs the logic. The packages creates the view. The templating system turns that model data into, uh, into HTML and, comes, and the outcomes are response. So the question is, where is all the code? And you know, the view, like you said, the view is really supposed to be lightweight, just make HTML. Exactly, yep. The model just holds data. So mm -hmm. then my natural conclusion when I started doing this is like, well, of course, all the all my code goes in my controller. Right. So just like I used to do with web forms, I'm going to throw all my code in my controller. <laughs> and and you're, you'll learn very soon. We're, we'll talk about some best practices. That's not where you want to do it either. Right. So, so <laughs> an important thing that I want to point out is this is not your whole application here. No. This is the flow of MVC. And yep. then good coding patterns say that your controller is going to call off to some services. Exactly. You're going to have some data access classes. You're going to have all these other things. So this is, this is the request response part. Mm -hmm. And then you build out your application on top of that. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah. OK. So that's my big diagram. I think we're getting, OK, so now let's talk about why. Yeah, exactly. We've got all of this going on. We've got all these different moving parts. You know, web forms, it was, it was simple. I just drag and I drop, and, and away I go. Why, why, why did we have to do this? Why did right. we have to change all this? Right, exactly. Yeah. So um, you know, web forms or like WordPress or whatever, yeah. right? You know, why, yep. why can't I just drop in a plugin or something? So, right. so um, 
here are some, some reasons I came up with. And these are things that I, you know, having done web forms and classic ASP and a little PHP before doing, uh, before starting on MVC, um, <laughs> these are some advantages that I found when I started working with MVC. Mm -hmm. So one is, it's very easy to, as you start building, it's, it's very easy to drag and drop something and get started. Right. Six months later or a year <laughs> later, you've got a, a big mess, right? Yes. And, and so you really need some structure in your application. Right. Yep. And the ways that we've done this in places I've worked is, you know, maybe the architects wrote up this huge standards document, you know, and said all data access needs to go through our DLL and we'll, we'll present, you know, or people said you need to have a separate project for your business logic and a separate project for this and that, yep. um, you know, or, you know, any other type of, of web dev platform, the same sort of thing. You end up running on some framework, Cake PHP or whatever it is, you know, yep. or, or you end up, um, you know, building up, okay, all my stuff here goes over in this folder mm -hmm. and stuff. But it takes some work to build some structure. MVC gives you that structure right from the beginning. Exactly. So that that's, you know, I guess point one and point two are really the same thing. Yeah. You start start to finish, you've got kind of a basic structure. Right. That that MVC lends itself so much better to a well-structured application than Web Forms does. Mm -hmm. You know, that with Web Forms, it just becomes so easy just to drag out a button, double click on it, and then write three pages of code. And it's not to say that you can't write bad code in MVC. You you absolutely can, but it lends itself that much better to writing good code. Yep. And, you know, as we're comparing and com contrasting, we're really doing it from the point of view of setting, you know, explaining why. What's the point of MVC? Yep. We're, as you said, you can write bad code in MVC. You can also write fabulous, amazing code in, in web forms. Absolutely. Or yep. any other, thing, any other yep. framework as well, right? So our point is not to bash on other things. It's really no. to kind of say, explain why MVC works the way it does. Right. Yep. Um, so uh, with MVC, you know, you often will find that you've got more classes and more methods, but tiny bits of code in them. And so, like, for instance, your controller actions will often have two or three lines of code because they're just calling off to a common service. Yep. Um, so, so you end up, by breaking things apart, you actually end up with less code because you've got less conditional logic and less, you know, all this kind of mapping things back and forth exactly. and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, and then finally, you have kind of a very smooth learning curve. So what I found, um, and I'll get with uh, web forms again, it's very easy to do file new project, start setting things up, you know, set up my master page, start dragging grid views in, start, you know, hooking up data. Um, as things get more difficult, then I run into some tough challenges where it's like, how do these two controls work together? Or I need some ex abstraction here because, you know, mm -hmm. my data needs to do something before it hits this, or you know, this control just doesn't do what I need to do. Now I need to write my own server control. That's hard. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or, you know, I need to dig into membership and that, you know, like how does that interact with my controls? So the idea is that there is more work in starting with MVC. Not a lot. Right. There's a little bit of ramp up. Yep. But the point is that it's worth it. Yep. So <laughs> trust us, it's worth it. Um, <laughs> I, and uh, like I, I had a great opportunity and, and you almost never get this opportunity to write the same application in two different frameworks. Oh, no right? kidding. Okay. So I, I had, uh, this was for, a, um, for some Microsoft conferences. Before uh -huh. I joined Microsoft, we built some conference websites. We built one in web forms, worked great, you know, it was highly scalable. Um, and then we, we needed to do some updates and there were some internal changes that were big enough on how we we're getting data and things. We said, we're gonna redo this using MVC. And it was really interesting to see the places where things like being able to control our URLs, being able to centralize our data access and, and just, it, we ended up, the getting started took a little more thought with MVC, but the end of the project was smooth. <laughs> Whereas with web forms, we ended up, the end of the project was, oh shoot, how are we gonna make this work? Right. So that, that's kind of a, you know, that smooth ramp. You know? and, and, and that is one of those things that, that, that I found personally as well, is any time that um, changes were needed, it's always so much easier to go into MVC mm -hmm. and update all of that than it is in, uh, in web forms. Yep. Because after all, the only constant in software development is change. Right, right. So just a few, few more things specifically on web forms. Um, 
so some of the values that you've got uh, in web forms is the idea of, you know, you are, it's very quick to get going. You're using controls that create your HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And so you're not directly writing that. You can, but you're not directly writing, you're responsible for that HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Um, so the controls are doing that for you. And the controls often are handling browser differences as well. Not as important now that browser standards have really kind of kicked in, but previously the, the controls were doing a lot of, right. you know, is this a, a down-level browser or is this this sort of browser and that yep. kind of thing. So web forms handles a lot of things for you. Here's the problem with that. In order to handle all those things for you, <laughs> I, I don't know if you've seen, if you're an experienced web forms dev, you've probably seen this, this diagram or something like it. You're not going to be able to read it on this slide. That's not the point. The point is there's all Don't worry, we can't read it on this slide either. So yeah, so the fact that you can't read it, don't worry about that. That's really not the point. <laughs> the point is that there's this life cycle. There's this thing. Okay, we're going to, you know, pre-page this, pre-render view state, pre-whatever it is, and, and we have to load up. The, we have to load up the state of what everything's in, understand what all the control state is. Exactly. Do some processing, and each control has to jump in in their turn, et cetera. Yep. So here's the problem with that. We, you know, you've got your one page that has your default, you know, that, that's running all these events. And that's just one page. That's, that's one, one page. One page. But even in that one page, there's actually three different sets of events going on because you've got your master page. Mm -hmm. And, and that's handling all your common site layout. Yep. And then you've got your page itself. And yep. that page is running user controls as well. Yep. Right. So this is getting a little more complex. But so, so just to, to, to kind of sum all that up, that's one page. We've got mm -hmm. products ASPX, but yet there's three sets of, of, of life cycles there because there's one for the master page to set up all the structure. There's one for the page itself. And then if you have a user control on top of all of that, you've got that. So you've got all of those different events that you have to potentially go in and, and capture. And not to sort of give something away, but there's also the matter of trying to name all the different yeah. controls. We'll get to that in a second yep, here. Yep. But yeah, there's so many different moving parts here. Just right. for one page. And this is one page. And then, again, your site has multiple pages, right? Yeah. Probably. It I'm, does. I'm just going to yep. guess that your site has more than one page in it. Yep. So that's that's one issue that you can run into that, that makes things more complex. Um, another thing is that in web forms, this is uh, view state, our friend view state. And th the reason to show this here, you can... Uh, the way that these controls work is they're, they're handling state for you. They're remembering what happened between, you know, I load something up, I fill something out on a form, I populate a grid, I send it back to the user, the user sends it, we send the information back and forth. Yep. And those controls are making it seem as the, if that state was pers persistent. Exactly. Even though the web is not persistent at all. It's right. every time you talk to a server, it's like, who are you again, right? One of the things I always like to say is that there's no magic in fill in the blank. So yeah. there's no magic in web forms. The fact that you're able to drag and drop that control and poof, hey, look, it's displaying data. There's still a lot of work that's being done behind the scenes. Even though you're not necessarily seeing the code nor writing the code, there's still a lot that's, that's being done to make all of that happen. Right. And then one last thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm really not trying to beat a dead horse because I'm, I'm a fan of web forms, but I, I want to point out, these are just some things, if you're very familiar with web forms, this is another thing that, <laughs> that can be an issue, is since it's generating your HTML for you, you don't have controls, you don't have as direct control over the IDs and classes. Now, all of these things are fixable in web forms. If you're an experienced web forms dev, you're, you're gritting your teeth because you're saying, wait a minute, <laughs> I can control view state. There's switches. There's yep. very specific controls over this. There are very specific controls over um, I can change my HTML markup. Um, and I can, you know, I can, well, th handling the uh, events, that's something that I've, you know, kind of learned. I've got my own structure, et cetera. It's true. <laughs> but these are all these are all yep. things that you have to solve. These are problems you need to solve in some different. You know, there there are things that you need to go in and do specifically. So these are all things that MVC was designed to handle for. You know, to handle differently. To right. Get rid of these problems. Right. One other really important thing with MVC is that it's designed for testability. So the idea is um, unit testing is a um, it's just the practice of testing your code. In code, right, right, and and the point is, 
when you go in and make a change, it's easy to write some code and make mm -hmm. it work. And, yep. and then you say, I'm done, woohoo. Right. That code lives on. And later, <laughs> someone might need to fix a bug, yep. you know, or change some functionality, and then what happens? Right. right. And so the whole idea is, that I think of unit tests as a safety net. They are- A seatbelt. A seatbelt, exactly. Yeah. So the idea is I would like to go in and change some code that maybe I wrote a month ago or a year ago, mm -hmm. or somebody, you wrote it, who knows who wrote right. it. I want to go in and change this code, and I want to make sure that I didn't break everything. Yep. That's all a unit test is. That's it. So it's a few lines of code that verify behavior. They verify that what comes in does some things. What's the expected result? And, and let's sort of compare and contrast how that's done um, quite typically with developers that maybe haven't done unit testing in the past, is you sit down, you create something, you go, oh, I want to confirm that this works. Well, what are you going to do? You're then going to write just enough code to like test it inside of a page. So you'll go in, you'll create the view, let's say, and then you'll go ahead and you'll fire up in your browser. You'll throw a couple of, of silly little values at it. You'll see, oh, look, I got an error message, or oh, look, I got the value that I I was expecting, and then you delete that, and then you move on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not, it, not only is that A, not overly effective, but B, it just as John mentioned, it's not going to live on. So when it does come time to make a change, or it does come time to uh, fix a bug, how are you going to know that what you actually did works, mm -hmm. unless you go back through that process again and again and again. With unit testing, test-driven development, all of that is automated. So if you're not already doing it, it's absolutely something that you need to consider doing. And don't underestimate the, the power of, uh, of unit testing, of test-driven development. Yep. And you know, this is something where you know, my first introduction to testing was we had a big QA department. And we would work on something for a while, and then QA would start testing it, and they would find a bunch of bugs. And then we would you know, finally resolve enough of their bugs that they were happy with it. They'd sign off, and then we'd ship mm -hmm. the feature. And then we'd add new features in. But did those features break some other features across on some other part of the application? Maybe QA is going to catch it. Maybe they're not, right? And so the right. problem is that so software is very interconnected, and changing one place may have a lot of effects that we d we're not thinking of. And unit tests live on, as you're saying, and so I can run my unit test suite later, and boom, everything's good. Exactly. Not to, and 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 this will, I, I guess, sort of be the last little thing. Otherwise, yeah. we could we could talk <laughs> test-driven development for yes. the rest of of, uh, of the day. Um, but uh, in any event, the one last little thing that's worth mentioning is that when you do go in and create those unit tests, because they do live on, you want them to be um, production-level code. You want them to be artifacts. That is something that you are going to generate. So that way, you can, when you go to make those changes. Uh, go back to those unit tests, and that's a quick way to see, hey, look, I made a change over here. In theory, that shouldn't be related to anything that I'm doing over here, but you know, how many times has this happened? Even though in theory they shouldn't be related, all of a sudden you find out that something happened and now that they are. Uh, with unit tests, it's very easy for me to pick that up. Mm -hmm. So, as, as Christopher said, unfortunately, we're not able to, this is an introduction to MVC, and we're focusing specifically right. on developing MVC code. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure if, the, if we have uh, MVA courses on unit testing, but that would be a, a, a very interesting uh, uh, course if, if not. There is a lot of good information also on um, the ASP.NET site and on MSDN yep. on unit testing. Yeah. Um, so, but the point is that MVC is designed so that it's not hard to unit test. Exactly. You can, because everything is written, it's very separated out mm -hmm. because a controller you know, has specific input and output and yep. it doesn't create HTML and it doesn't interact with, you know, the browser directly and, and the view, you know, we can go in and we can test everything exactly. in isolation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and we'll continue to dig into that as, uh, as we go forward. Great. Yep. Okay. I think it's time for some actual code. Yeah, let's actually do something. <laughs> you know, we've been talking an awful lot. Right, exactly. So, but the, the point is, you know, we want to kind of set the beginnings. Uh, we want to talk about what we're talking about, right? So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And all of that was important. I found it interesting. I hope everybody else did. I think it's good stuff. All right, so here, let me, uh, if I'm not doing this, I'm going to end my slideshow. I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio. Are we on my desktop? Okay. Yeah, remember you have to escape out of the slide. Oh, it's so, it's so it's, 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 it, it's been a little while since we've done this. Yeah, so actually, go back to PowerPoint, yeah, and escape out. Escape. Oh, um, yep. please stand by. 
So in the meantime, um, the um, uh, Where's my the whole goal of all of this is really right to ahead. make this, again, more code focused. And whenever I'm talking to web form developers, one of the things that I find is that they do sort of look sideways at me. Like, hey, why do we want to make this code focused? Why not keep just using the drag and drop? Why not keep using that WYSIWYG? But by making it code focused, again, it allows you to have that good separation of concern. It allows you to uh, really kind of better scale this, better handle changes. And then also, it does help make it testable, that one of the big things will be highlighting uh, a little bit later is that at the end of the day, all that a model is, is it's a class. And all that a controller is, is it's a class. And classes are always testable. So that's that, that is going to make your life in the long run that much easier. Yep. All right. I do believe right. we've got a desktop now. We do have a desktop. Excellent. And thank you for hanging in with us. This is the morning. We're all getting started. Exactly. Our, our yep. computers are getting their coffee. We're getting our coffee. We're, we're all good, though. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to um, create a new uh, web application. Yep. So actually, so I'm going to go file new project, and I would like to create web. Uh, make sure and you I'm going to go with. Yeah. yeah I'm going to do. I'm going to be coding in C sharp today. That is good to know if you are a VB developer. All yep. this stuff works. You can go, uh, you know, web, and you can code away in, in Visual Basic as well. Yep. So here I'm creating a new web application. Here's an important thing: if you are have been, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to let you. I, I don't want to steal your thunder. Go for it. <laughs> well, if, if, you, if you weren't going to mention it, I was going to mention yeah, it. Yeah, if you've been coding in uh, ASP.NET before, we used to give you a lot of choices yeah. when you did new web application. Yep. So you had to say, well, am I going to create MVC or web forms today? Right. right? And what we've done now with, with uh, 2013 is this is uh, one ASP.NET. Yep. So we're going to create an ASP.NET application. Exactly. And one of the things, while, while John in the background here is typing in uh, his uh, little um, uh, project name, and, mm -hmm. and he's going to hit OK here in just a second, yeah. um, one of the big things that I want to highlight, because this goes to a question that we got asked in the chat window, is, hey, is it possible to uh, have both uh, MVC and web forms inside the exact same project? Well, there's here your answer is. to that question. Yep. You'll notice right down towards the very bottom that you've got checkboxes. So right there, you've got web forms and web API. So that way you can just simply choose, oh yes, I am going to need this or I am going to need this. Yep. Which in particular, if you are making the move from uh, web forms into uh, MVC mm -hmm. and you're going, well, we've got a lot of existing code. We don't necessarily want to go back and rewrite it, but we want to do some new stuff in MVC. There you go. Yeah. I, I think I stole your thunder there. No, well, no, this is great. So the idea, <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly it. And I'm glad someone asked the question. You know, yes. It's, it's great. Yep. So the point is, now you have these choices. Instead, So I, I picture this in my head as the difference between options and choices. Mm -hmm. So I th sometimes a choice can force you into something. Right. Um, I like to have options. Absolutely. So for instance, going to dinner last night, we went to dinner and we got hamburgers. Yep. And uh, that was great, uh, but I don't want to have to say, you know, what do you want to eat for dinner for the rest of your life? Because <laughs> you know, I might not want a hamburger every single night. Maybe right? some spaghetti. It's maybe some spaghetti from there time to time. There we go. <laughs> so a um, little bit of an Easter egg for those who were at our yes, last NBA. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, so I would like to be able to say, well, I would like to start with MVC, but sometimes I'm going to be using some web forms, and sometimes I'll also be using some web API, right? <laughs> so the idea yep. here is, you know, I can say I would like an empty project, but throw in some web API and some web forms for me. Yep. Or I would like, you know, uh, web forms, but I also want support for MVC. What's also nice is, after I've made these choices, let's say I start out and I say, no, nope, I'm good with just web forms, and a month later I say, I want to use some MVC. You can also, when you bring in scaffolding mm -hmm. in here, it'll automatically pull in the MVC stuff for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to interrupt you for two seconds, only because yeah. we, we got a great question, yeah. which was, hey, um, can we use, say, for example, the same authentication mechanism for uh, MVC and for, for web forms in that same project? And the answer to that question is, yes. Yes. Because yep. at the end of the day, it's all ASP.NET. Right. So excellent. So if we uh, here is the same, you know, new project page. So here, if I say change authentication, and we're going to be looking at this in our mm -hmm. and our last or second to last session today, but this is the exact same dialogue here, setting up different authentication accounts and all that exact same thing, whether you click this or this. Yep. Right? And what's nice is. It's several things. One is your skills transfer across. So you're really good with ASP.NET identity and MVC, and then you go to help your friend on a web forms project, it all 
moves across well. Yep. Also, if I have one application um, and I've got mostly web forms but a few MVC controllers in there, no mm -hmm. problem. They all speak the same language there. Exactly. Okay. So, so that's great. So I'm going to click an MVC application. Hold on one second, only because, yeah. um, do me a favor, zoom in on that bottom right corner. Yep. You, you took the check away real quick, but this is something that, that we really should highlight. Yeah. That, 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 that uh, Windows Azure, that host in the cloud. One of the things, unfortunately, that we're not going to have time for, um, we're trying to make this an intro course. So mm -hmm. you really do wind up having to pick and choose uh, the different things that, that, that you demo. And unfortunately, we're not going to have the opportunity to demo uh, deployment today. Um, but since we've got the screen here, uh, it's still worth highlighting real quickly, is you'll notice the integration now with Azure and Visual Studio. That all that you would have to do is just put a little check next to host in the cloud. Yep. When you hit OK, it will then ask you, hey, do you want to go ahead and use an existing website? Do you want to create a brand new one? Uh, how about your database? And do all of that right through Visual Studio. And then that way, rather than having to go to the browser, create the website, download the publish file, you can do that just by putting a check right there, which is wonderful. Yep. And one place this really is helpful is a lot of the time if you're starting a project and you're working on a team, two or three developers mm -hmm. or maybe a big group, one of the first things you'll need to do is set up a database, right? Yep. And so then, you know, part of your first day is setting up the project, creating the database and getting everyone set up on it. One nice thing here is by checking the box, yep. everyone on my team that's working on this project automatically can connect to that database. It's already provisioned up on the cloud. I don't have to go to IT and say, please spin up a database for me. Exactly. This yeah. is, it's already, and this is a local, it's a database um, that's, you know, it's hosted for me. Yep. And if you've got MSDN benefits especially, you've got free, uh, free SQL. And as well, um, anybody, when you create a new website, an Azure website, yep. That includes a 20 megabyte, I believe, SQL database for free. For free, yeah. So exactly. It's great and, for you know getting started and sample data and all that. And, and there is also a, a free website as well that if you're just looking to do kind of basic stuff, um, it's a great way to go ahead and start integrating the uh, the cloud today with essentially no money down. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So one other thing I'm going to do, and we're not going to dig into it more, but I want to check this add unit test box. And I'm recommending, um, in general, just check this box. Um, it'll set you up so that it's not hard to write a unit test. Because part of the thing with unit testing is, if you have one test, that's a heck of a lot better than no tests, right? Right. <laughs> and so you don't have to, by checking, by you know getting started and putting in a few unit, unit tests, maybe if a big you know difficult bug report comes in and mm -hmm. you solve this, write a unit test that verifies that that bug is fixed. Yep. And it's it's great. So just checking this box makes it easier to just kind of get started down that path. Exactly. So it's not you're, it's not a big deal. <laughs> just check the box and you kind of get started <laughs> in the right direction, right? So I want to point out one thing that's going on here, and that is. As this application is spinning up, that sp uh, went by pretty quickly, but I was, I'm pointing out in the taskbar there that it is adding a bunch of NuGet packages. Right. So in the past, when we created a new project, it was actually just unzipping some, some files mm -hmm. um, that you had locally. Now it's installing a bunch of NuGet packages. And NuGet is the package management system for .NET. Right. And what that does is it allows for you know easily breaking things apart, putting things together, adding new capabilities to your application. Exactly. Handling dependencies, all that kind of stuff. And, and the biggest thing that NuGet does, um, because a lot of times people will look at NuGet and go, well, why not just simply create references to DLLs? Well, two things that NuGet can do for you. Number one is go beyond DLLs, uh, that it can uh, set up JavaScript files mm -hmm. and, and CSS files and the other things that you're going to need. But also number two is that NuGet, just like John mentioned, can detect dependencies, that it can go, well, wait a minute, you're wanting to install this package. This package depends on this and this. Let me automatically go ahead and grab those for you, making sure that you've got everything that you need. And then right there on the slide, um, John is, is highlighting uh, a whole bunch of the different uh, NuGet packages that are, uh, that are out there. Yep. So what I wanted to do here is, just to point out what you're saying, these mm -hmm. are the NuGet packages that are installed in your application. As an example, jQuery is not a DLL, it's, it's JavaScript, but jQuery validation depends on the jQuery library. Exactly. Yep. And so what that's going to do is it's going to say, okay, when, because you've got the jQuery validation, I'm going to make sure that you've got jQuery installed and the right versions right. for that. And you'll notice 
support for MVC is brought in as a NuGet package. Yep. So the point is, if you've got a web forms application, you can bring in MVC into your mm -hmm. uh, into your web forms project, yep. and it's it's actually just installing a NuGet package for you. One of the things I wanted to do point uh, is point out first of all, getting started. This is your uh, when you do file new project. This is a really handy page to know about. So this is this tells you a lot of kind of what to do next stuff. <laughs> yep. Um, so this is actually very useful, um, and I recommend file new project and click through this, and it's a good start. It, it, it is a good start, because one of the things, unfortunately, in the past is that a lot of times that start screen came up, and we all just sort of got into the habit of ignoring it, because there wasn't necessarily a lot of great information on there. That's changed. There really is a lot of wonderful information uh, that's on this screen. Um, and on the deploy, like the, the Ensure Your App is Ready for Production, make sure that you read through that, yep. that there's a lot of little things that people frequently miss. Yep. All right, so let's take a look at what actually was created in our app here. Yep. So an important thing to getting started is understanding the directory structure. Right. So we have a, we're talking MVC today, we have models, yep. we have views, and we have controllers. Right. Wow, wow, that, that, that was clever naming, <laughs> model view. Okay, all right, I'm still with you, Now, Excellent. I'm actually trying to get it renamed because we've also got scripts and content, and, and I, so I want to MVC, SC, I don't know, I'm working on it. Um, but, but the point is, this is, we were talking earlier about one of the advantages of MVC is kind of giving you some structure off the bat. Right. This is that structure, right? So if we're, if we're looking at, you know, where is a controller? Where, if maybe we're working on an application together, and mm -hmm. and you say, "Hey, fix something in the home controller." Well, I know where that's going to be. Right. Okay. And we talked about controllers are just classes and with methods in them, action yep. methods. We'll dig into all this in much more detail later. We're just kind of showing you around, right? Now. Right. Yeah. Just giving the you the, the the nickel tour, as it were. So here is a controller, right? Which is a class. It's a class. You'll notice public class home controller. Now it inherits from controller, but it's a class. Yep. That's it. It's yep. a class. And that that controller just kind of makes it easier to, do, to like it. It includes some some behaviors for you and stuff. Yep. But really, it stays out of your way for the most part. You have yep. a class, and then you create methods on it. And this is an action method. So when somebody calls into a controller, this action method is actually what's going to spin up. Yep. Then models is where we will put our models, and we've got a whole class about the, this later. Um, there are actually some at the very beginning of, uh, as you create your application, because your, your uh, user identity is actually stored using this whole kind of system, and right. see this is a model. Yep. And so that is your, your identity model there. And then finally, your views. And it's important to understand there's these conventions that map where things go. So if yep. I am in the home controller and I go to the index method and I say return view, well, which view, right? And this is where conventions kick in and say, if I am on the home controller and I'm looking for the index methods view, then let's find that. Let's just kind of look around. Well, if we go in views, there is a home directory that matches to the home controller and there is an index view. And so just because of those names match, that's how it finds it. Yep. So, and, and we're short on time here, so we're not really gonna dig into this in detail. Right. But I just wanna actually, you know, if I say, this is my home view, and I say, uh, you know, intro to MVC on MVA, right? So yep. I've edited the title, and then I say, uh, MVC is fun. Right, so here I've edited some HTML. With three exclamation. Points. Absolutely, yes. it's a lot of fun, right? <laughs> so, and the, and the controller. So when I browse to this site, mm -hmm. the home controller is the sp thing that spins up. It's yep. going to say return view, yep. and that view is going to return the index. So yep. let's just run that. You got to actually like if I'm going to create a project, we actually need to see something on the screen. Absolutely. And I think at that point, then after we see this mm -hmm. spin up with our, our glorious new page showing us how much fun MVC is. Um, yep. I think we're ready to take a break. Do me one real quick favor, yep. though, just since it's on your screen. Do me a favor, maximize that browser real quick for me. Yep. Uh, 
Yep. There we go. And what I want to highlight on John's screen real quick is you'll notice now down towards the bottom is mm -hmm. three columns. Go ahead and and, and uh, restore your screen again. To, to There we go. And now you'll notice when uh, he goes in and resizes his browser, now it's down to one column. One of the big questions that has come up a couple of times in the chat window has mm -hmm. been about setting up for mobile. Um, this is a little thing called Bootstrap. We're actually going to have a full module on yeah. Bootstrap, which I'm very excited about. But one of the big goals of, of Bootstrap is doing this type of dynamic resizing. And this isn't to say that you're not necessarily still going to need to go in and create views for specific device types. You still very well might. Right. This does eliminate a lot of that need, however, that this will automatically scale based on the device type. So it makes it that much easier to program for, uh, for mobile devices. Yeah. And this yep. is great because this is all done using CSS. It isn't exactly. Doing, it isn't on the server. There's no code to detect that it's right. a mobile browser. Yep. There's no JavaScript code. This is all just done using CSS. So it's yep. it's not going to break when some new phone comes out that it doesn't know about, et cetera. It's all done just based on how wide the screen is. Yep. So okay. So let's talk about what we've covered here. We we've done. You know, uh, we've talked about what MVC is. Yep. We've talked about why you should care. Yep. <laughs> and then we've done just the very quick file new project, what's involved in creating a new project. Yep. And we've looked at, you know, controllers, where the controllers go. Yep. We've looked at a controller returning a view. And actually, an important thing to notice there is this controller didn't have any model data to right. send to the view. Nope. So in this case, the model wasn't there. Right. right? It uh, just simply displayed a page. So that is the very, very simple case. It does. Okay. Yep. So, uh, so we'll take a 10 minute break. And then we'll be coming back, and we'll be talking specifically about controllers in more detail. <laughs> and, and, and we'll have a I burger. I have a burger. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, All right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to enjoy this delicious burger if they'll bring it back for me. And have a great break. We'll see you in 10. <laughs> we'll see you in 10. <laughs>